You want me to be honest with you, bro? Like, you it, get, it gets shit? me emotional, bro. Like, how, like, to think. Like, I tell everybody all the time, like, I'm not supposed to be here. You know what I mean? But the fact that I busted my ass and, like, you know, I, I have a lot of humility and that pride shit, I put it to the side always. <laughs> That's gonna happen. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Yeah. And we're gonna keep that shit in. Hey guys, welcome. I'm your host, Gabby Angel, it's just pushing wealth, and here with my brother, Danny Velasquez. And we're gonna teach you how to make it successful in the security game, man. And yeah. also the perspective of a NYPD detective. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, brother, tell me, um, where you from, man? I'm Why are we even here? I'm from Brooklyn, born I'm and raised. I'm from Brooklyn right now, you're? Um, you know, got one of the most beautiful backgrounds in the city. Um, you know, a lot of people from Brooklyn don't get to come experience stuff like this. So I like to put a lot of people that aren't from here onto spots like this. Um, so this is just one of like my little cheat codes out here. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. And where in Brooklyn are you from? Uh, so I grew up in Borough Park, which is a, it's a predominantly Jewish area. Um, back in like the 90s, it was crime ridden, but it wasn't really that bad. Um, due to the demographic of people that live there. But, um, you know, I grew up in Borough Park. I played ball in Flatbush, Sunset Park, uh, Lower East Side, Harlem, a whole bunch of places. So I grew up in Borough Park, but uh, you could pretty much say the streets raised me, but just not in a, in a negative aspect. Playing ball all, you know, throughout my life. Just, no, I grew up in different hoods, you know? I mean, bro, regardless, being from New York City, if, you're not, if you don't live in the best neighborhood in the world, yeah. you, you, exactly. you gotta know this something, true. man. You, you know someone. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes our family. For sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Like, uh, I always say our families, we're either cops or robbers. Yep. Literally. That's true. Like, you, have, have, you have 10 cops and then and 10 I, robbers. And I'm the first family. cop in my family, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tell me, man, growing up in an environment we grew up in, you know, sometimes there's a negative connotation of becoming a cop. What made you become a cop? Uh, I mean, just, you know, wanting better for myself, wanting better for my family, um, and just wanting to help people. Like, you know, I, you know, when we met, we met a couple months ago, I think. And, you know, our, our, our relationship and our, our conversations were just organic. Um, and I feel like a lot of people nowadays don't like having organic conversations and everything is forced. And, you know, especially, you know, me being in uniform or me having a, a badge or a shield, um, a lot of people are a little hesitant to have those conversations. So I, I, I like to try to create that nexus between, you know, like, you know, cops and then, you know, either people from the hood or just people from neighborhoods, um, you know, and, at the end of the day, it's gratifying for me helping people, whether it's me just saying hi to somebody, you know, saving babies, putting bad guys away, whatever it is. Um, just making sure I play my part in the community is is pretty much why, I, you know, I join. Yeah, from my personal experience, I always say this: like interacting with a with a great like a great person in a uniform, kind of sometimes takes away that image of, of 10 bad cops. The, like yeah, all, the, all of the negative yeah, yeah, connotations. Like, yeah, like, or negative connotations mm -hmm. because, um, again, throughout my life, you know, I've met, you know, great people behind the uniform. I, bad people behind the uniform. Of every, every aspect. For sure. Not saying, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like, I feel like the, the interactions I've had with great people behind the uniform has made me think twice. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, maybe not, they're not all bad. Like, you, of know, course. you know, growing up, that's the conversation we had. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. And at the end of the day, um, you know, I feel like personally, it's about how you grew up, right? Because I grew up, at the end of the day, a cop has a job. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's their job. If I'm a criminal, guess what? It is what it is. That is well, just somebody one, walking in the street. Now, one day you're going to yeah. get me. It's, it's, you know, it's your job. Mm -hmm. I'm doing what I'm doing. You get, away with it. you get away with it 364 got, days. You know what I'm saying? That one day you get caught, it's like 364 days. I got to get away with it. It ain't, it ain't your fault. Yeah. It ain't your fault. Yeah. You, you, you're doing a better job than me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, tell me, do you see any like um, battles of being a person of color being a cop? Did I, did I, did I, you know, not not in the job. I mean, like just just in your community or in, in your family. No, I mean, I, you know, me growing up, it was different, man. Like, you know, my family, I never really had, you know, we were the cool kids, like on the block. We never really got messed with, um, and it, my block was mostly Hispanic and black. But, you know, we were good kids. <laughs> All we do is play basketball, <laughs> chill in the pool in somebody's backyard, or like chill on the block. So like, you know, we never really got messed with. Um, whenever the cops would come around, we were real respectful. And it wasn't, you know, we didn't really have any bad experiences growing up, you know, thankfully. Um, and you feel like being a, 
a person of color has helped you in the, in the, in the department, at least with the community? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, being bilingual, being able to speak Spanish, um, it, it bridges the gap between, you know, minorities and, and, and us because sometimes people are very hesitant to, to speak to us because, you know, they don't speak. English isn't their first language, it's their second or, you know, maybe they or only speak like you can't Spanish. relate to them. Yeah. Or you feel so, like you, you know, to it's, it's, it's a lot easier when, uh, well, I feel that it, it, it plays an advantage me being a minority in on the force, so. You know, how hard is it for someone to move up in the rank? Because I know there's ranks in, in the police department. Um, I just got promoted to detective in February. Um, I just hit eight years in July. So about seven, it took me about seven and a half years to become a detective. Um, but I, I worked really hard, man. I worked really, really hard. Um, you know, I met a lot of, a lot of people that wanted to become a, t a detective and, you know, people are still, you know, we still have, I still have people, friends and colleagues that are still police officers that want to become detectives and it's, it's just hard, man. Like, I got lucky, to be honest with you. Um, I was in transit my first six years. Um, what does that mean? Because I was a transit know. cop, so you know those plain clothes officers that be in the train, that be in the train, like, the train? Yeah, yeah. that stop people from jumping turnstiles and stuff like that. So I did that for six yeah, years. I know that's a tough job. Nah, it's tough, man. It's people, tough. people don't understand. Like I it's personally tough. feel like you gotta do what you gotta do, but I feel like y'all don't want to really it's tough. fucking arrest somebody it, for it's jumping tough. the it's train. Tough. Like I mean, look, you gotta do what you gotta do. You know what I mean? If you got a warrant, it is what it is. You know. So just, just to, just to touch up on that question. Um, so I was, I was a. You was a transit a cop, cop. A transit cop for six years. Um, I got transferred to Harlem um, into the detective bureau to investigate like homicide robberies and stuff like that so um, you know it was it was it was a very big transition because all I knew was transit it was it was super eye-opening you know and then me being in East Harlem it's like yeah it's the, gr eye the gritty of the gritty you know it's so, eye opening just a touch base, just so people could have an idea, you know, maybe someone wants to become a cop. Um, you know, what, what's the difference now you be a detective? Like, what's the difference, plain clothes or you? I'm in a suit, um, I'm in a suit. You know, they have other units that, you know, you could be in plain clothes or where you're in an like, actual uniform, but I'm in a suit. It's like first 48. Yeah, you're doing investigation? Yeah, there. like especially like uh, Law and Order SVU. It's, so we, we, dress, we dress up like that. Um, but you know, I, my advice for somebody that doesn't want to become a cop or wants to take the, the detective route, like you got to work hard. Um, you know, you can't really take no days off. Um, you just got to make sure you do your job right. You know, a lot of people are under the impression that like, you know, if you're wearing a uniform, you're, you're negative, you know, like uh, how people view us negatively, but it, it's not really like that, you know? Um, or I think it's not like that. Yeah. From my experience, it hasn't been like different. That yeah, so. Um, so tell me, how was this transition to entrepreneurship? Because you became, you have your own security. Yeah, uh, it's, I mean, it's it's been crazy and quick. If if I could use two words, um, you know, I love networking. I'm I'm a social butterfly. Um, I don't really like being outside that much, but when I have to be outside, I'm outside. Um, you know, and and he's gonna probably clown me for for putting him on blast, but. My jeweler, my brother, uh, Greg Yuna, uh, grabbed me one day. It was, it was at his party, and I'm like, yo, I gotta leave to work in a couple hours. It was his birthday party, he's like, yo, like, just stay here and network for a few. I'm like, bro, I gotta go to work, you know. I'm like, bro, just stay for like another hour, just network. Like, you wanna be a cop the rest of your life? I'm like, yeah, actually I do. He's like, yeah, but you, there's so much more to you. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, last year, um, I had a little, I had a little bit of money and a little bit of time. I mean, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna open up my own security company. Let me see what's up. Um, you know, thanks to, thanks to Greg Yuna, Nigel Sylvester, and uh, you know the whole team. You know, everybody, you know, supported me. They held me down. They put me in the, into the rooms where I could like mix and mingle and make my own connections. And you know, about what is this? August 18th, so about a year and some change later. And he just looked into a very expensive watch. Nah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, it ain't, it ain't a regular one, all right, man? <laughs> about a year and some change later, like, I'm here, man, and I'm, I'm working with a lot of the biggest names in the industry, um, you know, in the retail game. Um, I've worked with a lot of famous artists. Um, you know, I'm sure Randy was talking about El Alfa, you know. Yeah, yeah. With, at the last interview, so, you know, I've worked with El Alfa. Um, you know, I've worked with Mike Amiri, Eric Emanuel, um, Paxson, uh, Sweet Chick. Those so are my your brothers. company overall, you do because you know a lot of people don't know this about me, but I, I was in security game, loss prevention, um, direction in the yeah. retail store. Yeah. So I know a, a little I bit. Off. I, I know off a little Sachs. bit. I know a little bit. Yeah. Um, so 
um, you know, you have an overall company, right? You're doing, you're doing re, re asset protection. Uh, asset yeah, protection, so we do like retail yeah, stores. Yep. You're doing, um, you know. We do door guard. We do, uh, you know, some bodyguard work, um, chauffeuring, which I work with another company, KLS. Um, so my company, I didn't even go, we didn't even go through that. Um, the name of my company is yeah. Kez Protection Services. Um, and uh, so it's a, it's a spinoff of my last name. So my last name is Velasquez. And I just took the last four letters. Um, and it's funny because the last four letters, when I look them up in Google, it had like a, a, a crazy meaning. And I, I don't remember what it is now, but I'll send it to you. Um, but it was just, it was dope, like how, how it came together. Because I was like, yo, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to name my company. And I'm like, you know, but I need to open it now. I'm like, I got to get this LLC. I got to do this. And I'm like, fuck it. I'll just name it Quez or Kez. Um, and it, it turned out to be like a super dope. Like, I can't, I can't even remember it and it's pissing me off. Nah, you're going to remember it throughout yeah. the interview. Um, so tell me, you know, for people who are trying to get into this industry, how has it been you getting these these jobs? Are you like networking or is it because, you know, word of mouth, like you're doing such a great job professionally that there's people I, telling, yo, go, go, to, go to Q. I think it's a little, I think it's a little bit of both. And, you know, timing, time is of the essence. Um, and some luck, man, because like, you know, I have a company, right? So let's say I'm coming to you with a, with a, with an idea or whatever. I have to sell myself. If you don't believe me, you think I'm full of shit, then my company is not worth anything. You know what I mean? If, uh, excuse me, I saw you looking, I got nervous. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I, word of mouth plays a big, a big deal. Like again, like, you know, Greg, you and Nigel Sylvester, those are two of the biggest names in the industry right now. Um, you know, Greg on the, on the jewelry tip and then Nigel on the BMX tip. So, and then, you know, and then so much more. Um, but you know, their, their word is as good as gold. So it's like, if they give me their blessing, and that's how I got in touch with like, you know, Sweet Chick. My man Tony actually put me in, in touch with his, his uh, connect from Sweet Chick. So, um, you know, I think word of mouth is good, but also a lot of people knowing who you are and like just being true to yourself and like not screwing anybody over. I, I can curse here, so not fucking anybody over and not, you know, not playing, not playing funny with anybody. You know, because if, if I'm genuine with you all the time, every time you see me and I show you love, you're more, you're, you're less hesitant to, to not believe what I'm saying. You know what I mean? You know, like, yo, Danny's a good dude. Like, I'm gonna fuck with his company over somebody else's. So that's, I mean, that's honestly how, like, I started off. You know, I started off, my first contract was uh, with Eric Emanuel. Uh, and my man actually runs Eric Emanuel. So he, he actually shouted me out. He's like, yo, D, like, I need, a, I need security. I'm like, bro, I got you, like, whatever you need. And every job is different, right? Because not every, every, yeah, every, every contract needs not every contract needs like, like uh, armed guard or yeah. We you know, rarely doesn't we rare, need you to be there. We or, rarely use armed guards, and I'm I'm always there just to like oversee if I can if I can be there. Um, but you know I have I have a really good team of guys. You know, um, I got I got my man Ant and Kyle. Those are my two supervisors out here, and then I got my man Mike in Miami. So, so we're expanding. We want to Miami now. Uh, nah, we've been in Miami since our uh, been January, in Miami. Yeah, right? so, yeah. <laughs> so um, tell me. Um, the experience between just being like door guards or asset protection over being um, like a bodyguard mm -hmm. or an artist. How's that experience? It's I mean, a big difference. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, it's crazy, man. Cause I, st you know, I started off at Saks Fifth um, and I was just a door guard at Saks Fifth. This was 2000, I want to say 12, 2013. And this Maybe is 11. while you're on the force? Or? No, 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 no. This was before, before I was a cop. Um, this was after I graduated college. Um, so I went to Brooklyn College, played ball there four years, and I was like, yo, I need a job. I took the test, passed, waited waited for the uh, NYPD to pick me up. So I started off at Saks, doing door guard. I went to Long Island, they gave me my own store in uh, Garden City. So I was running that store as asset protection. Um, and I picked up a lot of my, of my experience from there. You know, like stopping people that were stealing, like learning how to apprehend without getting aggressive or how, or, and learning how to put cuffs on the right yeah, way. Yeah, or just not even having to put cuffs on it, just being able to walk somebody to yeah. the back. Like, yo, my man, look, I'm not going to put these cuffs on you, but we're going to walk to the back. Yeah. I'm going to call the cops. But, like, it is what it is, bro. You got caught. And, you know, nine times out of ten, people comply. If you know how to, if you don't start with somebody up here, then it's fine. Yeah, of course. It's always when you start up here where you kind of have an issue, you know? Um, and that, it's, it just honestly just snowballed into, I took that, and I got a good, uh, my man Anthony, who used to work at Hermes, He's with my company now. He's my supervisor. Um, he he does things every, like the way I would do things. So I let him train everybody. He hires most of my guys. Like he 
he, he's a real big help. Um, and, you know, everything just snowballed from there. And the way we got El Alfa, who was like our big, our big uh, star, let's say, like to, to start off, um, you know, he was in Amiri shopping and I caught him on the way out. So my man Mike was like, yo, El Alfa's in here, like come through, chop it up with him. So we chopped it up. And he's like, yo, I'm gonna need security like this week. We're like, all right, cool. I, you know, look, what the fuck do I think El Alfa's gonna need me for? You know what I mean? Like, I figured he had everything set up. He got his security, but yeah, like, yo, he needed security and he, like, he trusted us with it. And like, I take that. It's a big fucking deal. And it's like, crazy. Look, one look of how the biggest things, names in the world. And like, look how things come full circle, like on the smaller scale. My guy right here, being security of El Alfa, kind of, kind of skirted. Our, our boy Randy, an alumni of, of yeah, Push You Up, to the side real quick, and that's, that's how fact. they became, yeah. became yeah. Um, cool because I'm he was like, on security at Life kid with hats, like we, yeah. you know, because we're doing the music video, like we were in Queens, as a matter of fact, and I see this kid with because you don't know, box. you got you got to be on. I point. don't know, I don't know what the fuck is in the box, bro. Like, so I'm like, yo, my man, like, nah, 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 it's like, chill, bro, chill. And that I was like, yo, nah, he's good. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, <laughs> a thousand people there. If he's saying he's good, like, all right, bet. All right, that's you know, now I got to worry about 999 people, not a thousand. Exactly. Um, but nah, shout out to my man Randy, you know, I, I should have worn one of his hats today, but I'm, you know, I'm wearing <laughs> one of my own little joints. Um, but yeah, nah, it's, it's just crazy how everything comes together and like, you know, things come full circle. And I just, uh, I linked up with Randy recently. Um, Emmanuel Hansel just pulled up to Eric Emmanuel, so, you know, we pulled up, showed him some love. Um, he came to the store and shot, so it was, it was a dope vibe. Definitely. So, so tell me, man, any tips for people trying to get into this industry? Yeah. Um, whether it's as so an employee or a company? Like, I always say it's, it's different for me, right? Because, like, the, 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 team, the team and, like, the, the support that I had was a lot, a lot different than somebody else that's just starting out of nowhere, like, yo, I'm going to start a security company. Like, you know, I know a lot of people in the industry, and, and everything is about relationships now. It's all about who you know. You know what I mean? It doesn't really, it doesn't have to do with money. It, you know, if you're a good person, it helps. Um, but it's all about who you know. So, you know, get out there. If you're, if you're not the kind of person that likes to talk to people or you're not social, then you gotta fix that shit. You have to talk to people, you know? Like, I, I'm the motherfucker that somebody's eating breakfast, I go say what's up, just cause. Like, hey, yo, how y'all doing? Enjoy your breakfast, just keep it moving. Like, you never know who's gonna, who you're talking to, you never know who's gonna remember that. And like, you know, a year down the line, you'd be like, yo, I just, yeah, what you doing? Oh, now nah, I got a store. Oh, really? I, I do security, you need, yeah, boom. And just shit just comes together like that, you know? Like, just super organically. And basically, um, you built a portfolio in a way. Yeah. Like, when you said that in the artist, uh, like, it's, in the it's crazy. In this industry, but you have a portfolio. It's crazy. Because you, you have, like, look, this is the work I've done. It's crazy. And yeah. examples, and, and here are the people you can contact. Yeah. And it's all about professionalism at the For end sure. of the day. For sure. 100%. Because you're building a network. You're building, like, okay, you could call these people yeah. and confirm that I did a great job. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's very important. You know, and then, in every industry, especially in this one. You know, especially, you know, depending on who you're with or where you're at, like, there's going to be other people taking pictures of you. And you don't even know. So like you got pictures that pop up on the web. Like we did a we did a Pack Sun event with um, Sweet Chick and ASAP Rocky, and a million pictures popped up. Um, we did another one with uh, with Grace Vanderwall at Pack Sun. You know th those pictures popped up. Well, you think up. you even be here, bro? You want me to be honest with you, bro? Like you it, get, it gets shit? me emotional, bro. Like how like to think like I tell everybody all the time like I'm not supposed to be here. You know what I mean? But the fact that I busted my ass and like you know. I have a lot of humility and that pride shit I put it to the side always. Like I don't I don't I, I don't want anybody thinking I'm better than them. I don't want I will outwork somebody, but I'm not better than anybody. I'm not you know, I'm super humble, bro. And like that's that's it, I've come to the realization that it can be taken away like this, just as fast as I came of up. Of course. It can be taken away like that. You know what I mean? And and I don't take it for granted at all. And speaking about that, are there just me being curious, are there any like specific um, insurance you have to get for this? Yeah, yeah, you gotta get general liability insurance, um, which I had uh, my man Stags, who got his own company, you know, shout out to Stags. Um, you know, he sent me the, uh, the the referral for the insurance. And um, you gotta give them like your license number, your company name, all the information that you need for your for your company. Um, you put it through, they, they search for like the best quote, and then, you know, they'll tell you, oh, well, your, your monthly is, let's say 2,000 a month. Or whatever and I'm just I'm just using that as as yeah. a general number um, so you know it could be it could be 500 a month it could be 10,000 a month it all depends on yeah because you got how many contracts which exactly, happens right yeah the, you know the more armed guards you have the more your liability goes up and it's like you know so I, I try to steer away from like the armed guard stuff 
especially since you know me being a cop, it's kind of you really can't do it. Yeah. So, um, you know, but if I'm out, you know, and I'm with one of my guys, not working, but if I'm out, and I'm with one of my guys, and I have my firearm, on, I'm not covered by my my company insurance, yeah. but you know, I'm I'm justified if something pops off. But you know, I I uh, I hope that I never have to use it. I people I know people always say like, yo, you got you're a, you're a cop, yo, let me see your gun, like. Yo, that shit must be cool. Have you? No, bro. Like, that's, I especially fear, you have a higher responsibility. Yeah, bro. Because anything, because you remember, like, especially, we're not gonna go too much into politics, but now how you're gonna be able to get access to having an arm, a gun here in New York. Yeah. Like, it's the difference between being a civilian and getting into something, mm-hmm. and being an off-duty cop and getting into something. Hundred percent. It's a high liability, and you yeah, could lose your job. For sure. I get into something as long as I didn't do, I didn't do anything wrong. Like, I'm justified. I'm not gonna lose my job. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You might lose your job. Yeah. By any any no, reason yeah, whatsoever. So tell me, man, um, any tips you have for the youth out there, man, who's trying to, you know, maybe change their life or or they feel like they 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 are hitting a brick wall, just in general. Yeah, man. Um You know, it's funny because I'm I'm the oldest of, of seven. There's, I have like seven cousins that we grew up in the house, so I consider them my brothers and my sisters. I was the oldest one. So I didn't really have anybody to really look up to. You know. Mom was the person I look up to. That's my superhero. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, if you're a kid coming up, you know, young kid, or even if you're an, an adult and you're lost, um, just find somebody that that resonates with you, that you match their energy, or that you know that you can confide in, that you can trust, um, and just run ideas off of them. You know, it's you don't get anywhere without asking questions. You know, and and, and when I started this company, I asked, I had a million questions. I might have asked the same question a million times. And I do it everywhere. When I got to the detective bureau, I asked a million questions. When I became a cop, a million questions. Like, you, you never, you never want to go into something not knowing about what you're getting into. You know, even if it's a little bit, a, a little bit of information. Um, so yeah, man. I mean, look. Even if you know, even if as a youth, you know, you want to reach out to the cops, firefighters. Look, nine times out of ten, they're gonna, they're gonna help you. You know what I mean? Or ten times out of ten, from my experience. Somebody asked me a question ten times. I'm gonna give them an answer, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, it's and I know right now it's tough growing up. Like, you don't really see kids outside playing, so it's like video games, social media. And it's a lot YouTube, going on. Man. It's, it's, it's a and lot, it's, bro. It's a, and you and know I don't know. If, I don't know if I could grow up in this in this world as a kid, bro. It's tough. You know, it's a tough. lot better than all of us. There's a lot of a lot of shit going on. Yeah, right yeah, hundred percent. And it's it's not, you know, sometimes even playing basketball. You can yeah, get into bro. situation. You can, yeah, bro. Listen, you know what I'm saying? Like, let me tell you something, bro. It makes you not even want to go outside. There's been, some there's, been, there's been hoods we play bowling, and if you win, we got to run out the park, bro, because, like, it's happened. It's happened. Believe me. Of course. I was just talking to somebody about that the other day. You can't, you know. But it's different now. Niggas, it's not, they're, not, they're not shooting anymore. Nah, no nobody, nobody, nobody's, nobody's fighting. Nobody's shooting Everybody's the shooting. Yeah. Nobody's shooting the field. Nah, that, that's so. the issue. But um, at the end of the day, what I've, I've realized, too, is, again, it goes back to how you grew up, even in the streets. Because I know a lot of people who they respect anyone who is just true to themselves. Mm-hmm. If you are who you say you are, you got that respect. Yeah, you don't you need to be tough. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to be, you could, you, like, you yo, know. that's Danny, like, that's like, a smart kid on the got block. Respect. Like, chill, he's good. Whoever don't respect you is because they didn't grow up with the values that we grew mm-hmm. up with. And it doesn't matter if street or not. Yeah, you, you know? can't teach that. You, you can't, can't teach that. that. You, you know what I'm saying? It. And it's a, different, it's a different type of street now, too. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it's we gritty. had- It's gritty, bro. We had a lot of morals. The streets had a lot of morals The streets is tough, bro. Ain't no morals anymore. You got dudes robbing, you know, 90-year-old women. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Ain't no respect. And I feel, you know, I fear for my for my family. Like, they got to walk the street without protection or, you know, that they got to walk the street in the night or whatever. It's, it's tough, man. It's tough. Yeah. So, you know, New York is New York is tough, man. It's tough. The last question I have is, where do you see your company in five years, man, and yourself? Oh, my God, man. I, you know. Are we in, in five different states? Six, the million-dollar question. Um, Hopefully, bro, hopefully I'm in more than five states, bro. I mean, it's it's tough. I'll be honest with you, like, it's amazing. I love what I do. Um, it's very hard to, and I don't do it by myself, but I take a lot, I, I overwhelm myself with a lot of the load. Um, you know, I have, a, I have an amazing assistant, Vera, she's amazing. Um, you know, my 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 three supervisors, Kyle, Anthony, and Mike, like, you know, they they, they help me with a lot of stuff. Um, but in, you know, if, if, if I can expand and, you know, keep growing with the companies that I'm with, I take this shit to the moon, bro. You know, um, I mean, you know, hopefully we don't hit another pandemic where we ain't, we know, ain't, we ain't putting that into that anywhere. Where, where the retail shit, you know, ends. But I mean, you know, there's always, there's always a need for security. And as long as I 
see, you know, get in where I can fit in, I'll, I'll be fine. My company will be fine. Everybody that works for the company will be fine, you know. And I try to, you know, I, I try to, I try to show guys like, look, y'all don't work for me. I never, I never try to be like, yo, you, you work for me, you work. For, no, I don't do that. You work for the company, you work for yourself. You know, you're a representation of the company, but you work for yourself. You work for a check for yourself. I, you don't work for me. You know what I mean? Like, you work for the company. So if, if, uh, yeah, man, if I, if I could just keep, keep pushing how I have, sky's the limit, honestly. Well, thank you, Danny. It was a pleasure, nah, brother. I appreciate it, bro, for sure. Love, bro. Of course. I'll thank see you. you next year for the next See one. you next year for the next yes, one, sir. right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, appreciate it, bro. Nah, of course, bro. Thank you.